Welcome back everyone. So uh, for tonight we're going to look into uh, creating your hooks and we're also going to look into uh, creating test from working from beginning to the end. My name is TG Ogunaja. So for this course, uh, like I said last week, you're going to cover all these stated. I think we we'll, have we'll done some of this one last week, so it's going to cover the rest. So. If you missed the last sessions, you can look onto the YouTube. Just search for Blue Sky Saturday, and you'll be able to catch up on the first session. So then, yeah, the last time we actually looked into download and install Visual Studio as part of the step for setting up the framework. We look into integration integrations of Speclo extension with Visual Studio ID. We also went through creating your first project. We had NuGet packages. We created our folder structure. And we were able to create our first you know, feature file and also the step definition and also run the test. So, and going on from there, so well, the next one is for us to create books and also page objects and then find elements. Today, we're going to look into those steps. So how do you need to do that? So you know, let's look into creating your hooks, basically. One, well, I'll look at, I'll tell you what those hooks are, but let's just try to see how we use them. So, so what you need to do is just uh, create, you know, right click on the folder that we created before the folder hooks and if you right click on it and you click on add you click on new item so when you click on new item you see this particular screen that you can see here so when you see on that screen you would click on spec flow hooks basically so but however it's possible you might not see this screen if you don't see this screen you need to select spec flow into select spec flow. So if you select spec flow, then you will see this particular template. Then you can select spec flow hooks. Then after that, enter your name, enter the name of that hook. So I've already proposed hook.cs. So you just enter that name and you click on add. So once you do that, it's going to create a skeleton, a snippet of the code for you. So now, I said I will speak a little about hooks. So hooks allow you to run some step before scenario or after scenario or before feature or after feature. So an example, I'll just go through this one. So for instance, you want to run some step before your test will start or you want to run some code after your test has started. So, or you want to run the test within the scenario, um, after a scenario has started or before a star scenario um, is started. So, these are the steps that you put in the, in the hooks. A sample of what you're going to put in there is, for instance, before your um, scenario, you want to initialize your driver, your Chrome driver or your Firefox driver. So you will do something like this. You will say driver is equal to new Chrome driver then. Because we are using MS test, I found that there are issues. So normally you wouldn't have put any parameters in this particular Chrome driver, but it was not working for MS2. So um, MS test actually. So this is an issue, but I got it working by putting this parameter inside it so that you can be able to locate the Chrome driver exe using that parameter. So however, you you maybe you will have seen places where this is not, there's no parameter inside. For instance, if you are using n unit, you don't actually need any parameters. I think it will just work. So then after scenario, you will have something like close your driver or quit your driver. So you put something like that. So the same way also, in some cases, you want to also um, like login or something. Some people will put it in the before feature if it's it is kind of before your features or, or there's other thing you want to clear your cache, you want to do everything before your test start or after your test has started. You can put them in the um, after 
feature. So we'll look into this later. But the simple scenario is these two that you always use, basically, before scenario and after scenario. So once you have this, so this thing will be like the snippet that you're going to have, a full snippet. So it's going to say that um, for additional details, you should go into this particular link. So, but however, you have a to-do um, snippet created for you. So, but what happens is like if you put anything in your before scenario, that particular block or statement is going to be executed before your scenario starts. And also, any block or statement that you put in your after scenario is going to be executed after your scenario has, start, um, has finished. So that's how these hooks are going to, to work. So init initially, I, I think, like I said before, I'll go into my folder structure. And no normally, you don't see people, some people won't create hooks folder. You will put it in utility folder. So what I've seen in for newbies is like because your hook is related to your is in the context of your solution, right? So if you have hooks um, in your utility and you don't know where exactly it is, because let's say you have the, the utility folder uh, now having like seven or eight classes and you don't name it properly, so you would find yourself looking at oh where is my hooks? because it's running somewhere and you don't know where exactly it is. That's why uh, as a advice or my own recommendation, I would recommend that you put it in, in a folder so that you can be able to reference it or know where your books are because it doesn't matter where you save them, they are going to run before or after your scenario. So for instance, if you are running your scenario and your book is somewhere and you don't know where exactly it is, it's going to be firing from that place and it will take you time to be able to see unless you debug and you, you go into that particular step. And so that's why if you put it in a folder, then you'll be able to uh, um, go to that particular folder easily. So I have said, okay, now this is kind of a complete one. So like I have created, so you have your um, Group created for you. Now I've now all, um, modified this. So now what I've done in my hooks is now to initialize my driver. So as a web driver. So we're going to be using web um, driver a lot. Basically, it's our messenger. So for everything that we want to interact with the web. So I've got my um, web driver um, initialized. Then the next step that I want to do is to uh, for my before scenario, before I start any scenario, I want to initialize my driver so that Chrome driver is opened, basically. So at this point, your Chrome driver will be opened. Then when I finish my testing, I want to make sure that I shut down Chrome driver. So you can actually use driver.quit or close. So this is what the snippet will look like. So if you have access to this particular um, slide, you would just be able to copy and paste this code snippet into your project. So that is all about oops and how it, it works.